Welcome to Speak. So glad to have you here. Again, I'm Emmanuel Acho. That is NFL insider Dave Hellman to my left, the brilliant Joy Taylor, Philadelphia Eagles all-time rushing leader LaShawn Shady McCoy. Now, once again, this show, the DeMar Hamlin story, is near and dear to our heart. We have athletes, we have journalists, we have people that have covered the sport for a very long time. So we will lead the show in discussion with DeMar Hamlin. There is a very urgent and important update because we do have some positive news. The Bills gave an update on safety. DeMar Hamlin tweeting, Quote, he remains in the ICU in critical condition with signs of improvement, noted yesterday and overnight. He is expected to remain under intensive care and his health care team continues to monitor and treat him. The operative words there being signs of improvement. We will continue to cling to what is important right now and what is most important is his health and DeMar Hamlin's improvement. We will talk about other things today, but we would be remiss if we did not start on the most important sports matter. Right. LaShawn McCoy, you played for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. You went to Pitt. DeMar Hamlin plays for the Bills. DeMar Hamlin went to Pitt. He is your fraternity brother in more ways than one. What is your reaction to the latest news? Um, I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm happy that his breathing has increased, has, has been better um, over time, and just it's improved. That, that's the biggest thing. And I love that, like, is, everybody's aware of this, right? Like, on different networks, you know, so much sports going on, but everybody's making this the, the, the main topic at hand, and that should be. I think um, D. Ham, his his health, um, you know, his 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 everything w with him as far as getting better every day, showing improvement, signs of showing improvement, and all the support he's getting from Buffalo fans, from everybody, from us, from every network on TV. And I'm happy to see that that people are making this the the, the, the biggest issue at hand and making it the biggest thing. Yeah, it's absolutely the biggest issue to this show. It's the biggest issue <clears throat> in sports. It's the biggest issue to my heart right now. Joy Taylor, what is your reaction to the update? What's your reaction to the news? I mean, obviously, it's, it's exciting to hear that he is improving. It's, it's encouraging that he's improving. And, you know, this is going to be a process where we all have to be patient. We're not there. There's nothing we all can do but pray and continue to support him. And he's, he's in great hands, and they're doing everything that they can for him, and he's fighting. And so to hear that he is improving and that it's getting better is obviously very, very encouraging. I'm sure it's encouraging for his family as well because you want any kind of, of good news in this situation. But what's also really amazing to see is just the continued support and reaction. We live in a very quick society. Stories get turned over very quickly and to see the continued support for his, uh, his toy drive, the number just continues to go up. It's still at the front of everyone's mind. It's still what everyone's talking about. So it's, I'm sure it's great for his family to be able to see that, you know, we haven't moved on and we're still, you know, speaking his name and continuing to send, send support to DeMar and his family. For obvious reasons, too. It, 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 of course, it, it's resonated on a level that I just don't think we've seen very often. And in a very encouraging way. I mean, you talk about the toy drive. It was over six million, I think, when I checked it this morning. That's incredible. You're seeing, obviously, Shady, there's dozens of pit players in the NFL. You're seeing warm words coming out of every locker room in the league. Like, it's not just the Bills and it's not just the Bengals. It's everywhere. Every stadium in the league. Like, we talked about social media. You can do that with a couple buttons. Like, they're changing their lights up to reflect this. Uh, even in other leagues, like you're seeing baseball teams do this. Uh, and for me, there's so many cool gestures. Like, I think you could do a segment on all of them. But one that really stood out to me this morning was uh, DeMar's former teammate, uh, Harrison Phillips. Uh, Vikings D-tackle, former Bills D-tackle, spent a few years yep. there. Well. He, he paid for the, the food at the ICU for everybody there, from DeMar's family to his, his management team, the nurses and the doctors that are doing everything for them. Um, and obviously, I mean, they're former teammates, so of course you would, you would expect a gesture like that, or, or it's not surprising, but it's still really moving and very uplifting. And we're seeing stuff like that from, like I said, from every corner, definitely every corner of the NFL, but even corners of the sports world as well. Speaking of corners of the NFL, there's $6.6 .6 million have been donated, but what's been so awesome to see, I've seen guys like Christian McCaffrey, Devontae Adams, Tom Brady, Russell and uh, Sierra Wilson, Drake London, Marcus Jones, Andrew Whitworth, several different cornerstones, foundational pieces of the National Football League, big name players, uh, chipping in to support him in this time. Once again, remember... I did, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
Um, hyperbole has become reality right now. Like, we, it's hyperbole <clears throat> to say that you got to lay your life on the line in the National Football League. It is hyperbole to say that I'm going to war with my brother. It is typically hyperbole to say that I'm going to fight to the death with one of my brothers. But quite literally right now, DeMar Hamlin is in that fight for his life. Dave, as you were speaking, I was thinking, because Shady and I have talked at length about being the player, but... As a journalist, you spent 10 years inside of a locker room. On this show, at times, we get into trivial and fun conversations about Dak Prescott. And you clearly, you say that you owe Dak Prescott an award. You owe Dak Prescott a lot. Y'all formed, to some degree, a bond during your time in that locker room. Speak to me of the relationship between even beat writers and players inside that locker room, like a player like DeMar Hamlin and how tough that might be, even for the beat writers. We're focusing on athletes, focusing on loved ones, but talk to me even about coaching. Work. Of course, and I mean, look, I mean, it's uh, we don't spend as much time with football players as their teammates do, but I mean, it's not a stretch to say like during a season you see some of these guys more than you see your own family. Like you're on the road all the time, you're in the locker room four days a week, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday after the game. You tra- like I said, you travel, you talk to these guys all the time. You and in the case of players that spend a long time, like you might spend a decade forming a relationship with a guy like that. And I think the challenge is to cover everybody the same, regardless of how good or, or non-existent or bad your relationship might be. Of course, like you can't develop an amazing relationship with all 70 players on a team every single year. But of course, it's human nature. You're going to resonate with some of these guys, whether maybe a guy just understands your job a little bit better or, or maybe you just hit it off for some other reason. You have similar hobbies. You'd be shocked to hear... Every year, I seek out the LSU players in the locker room. Just, you know, it, you are shocked to hear. Yeah, I know, right? That's very surprising. I mean, you look, like you're looking for common ground, right? Like, hey, man, I, I, we went to the same school. We spent four years in the same town. We can relate on this level. And sometimes that leads to some great relationships. Sometimes it's just like, okay, cool, like no big deal, or or uh, various other things. Like I said, hobby, like you know, football players like to hunt. Football players. I mean, they have all the same hobbies as other people. That's what we've been talking about all week. They're human beings. And so you spend enough time in the locker room, of course you're going to develop relationships. And it makes stuff like this <clears throat> poignant. It, it can make it challenging. Um, but it's, it's also really rewarding. And yeah, like some of the relationships that I've built with players over the years, I'm, I'm really proud of. And I, I pride myself on not letting that change my coverage uh, but the ability to do that, I think it makes you a better reporter. And um, it's it's something that I try to keep in, mo- in mind in moments like this. Shady, clearly the Bills have a game this weekend. So let me ask you, right now, do you believe practice would be a great distraction? Or do you th- believe that practice, meetings, uh, team meals, et cetera, might be a reminder? You've played for the Bills. You've been in that practice yeah. facility. You know those guys. They're your brothers. Educate the viewer on, like, what is practice going to be like, helpful or hurtful in these moments? So, and that's, that's a hard question to answer. Um, one thing about Sean McDermott, the head coach of the Bills, <clears throat> he's done a great job of, of creating this, this culture there where it's really like, like brothers and a brotherhood. And every locker, locker room has that. But over there, it's a lot different. Like, the defense and guys normally stay with the defense. Offense stays with the offense. But, you know, Tom, they'll get together. Well, in Buffalo, everybody's together. Um, and, I, and I think that everybody's hurt. People on TV that, that, that don't even know DeMar. So guys on the team definitely are hurt. And I think together they can help each other out. So maybe if it's practice, maybe if it's just in the locker room, lunch room, things where we can bond, we can talk. Because I'm, I, I'm hurting, dog. I'm hurting. And I know you're hurting. So how can we help each other out? And I think the best thing right now um, is for the team to be together because family members won't understand. They're, 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 I'm sure they're there to have a shoulder for you to cry on, right? To be that crutch for you, but they're not in the same locker room. Like my teammate, your teammate was on the ground. Now he's fighting for his life. So I, I truly think that being there together will be good for them. Now, when the game happens, I don't know how that will be. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that the football instincts as, as a football player kicks in. Maybe the warm up might be tough. Because D. Ham, like, we don't know his, his, his um, pregame routines. Yeah, yeah. He might get the guys riled up, might get them hyped, have words of encouragement. And so now you're looking for that. You're looking in his locker room, or in the locker room, you're looking at his locker, he's not there. So you missed that. I'm just hoping that once again on the field, it's second nature. Throw ball, catch, tuck, you know, run, hit. Them things we've been doing since you've been six years old, it kicks in. You know, and I hope that happens because you can't play this game hesitant. That's when guys get hurt. And I think when things are on your mind and you're kind of distracted, that's when other things happen. So hopefully 
you know, my, my boys, man, can go out there and just play, you know, and the support of him. Like, a lot of that stuff, as ballplayers, it's either bullets and board material or it's stuff motivational. I think it's something motivational. Like, what would Dehan want us to do? Would he want us to, to, to be sad or go out there and fight in honor of his name? Yeah, fight while Things like fighting. that matter. So yeah. We'll see. Absolutely. Well, let's make sure that thoughts and prayers are more than just words. Make sure that they are action. We all say we are sending love, but love does. Love is an action word. So rather than just... Uh, superfluously talking about what you right. think and what you want to do. Turn that love, turn those words into action because DeMar Hamlin definitely needs your help in these moments as he continues to fight victoriously for his life. More speak after this. <laughs> 